Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Smash Talk. It's been a couple months. Uh, a lot of stuff has happened. Uh, but me and my friend Pizza Dude Man Guy... Hello! Uh, ...are here to cover the few things that have happened over the, over those months. That's uh, right. Talk about what's coming in the future. And, uh, we, you know, we put together a list of like the things we wanted to talk about. And, uh, honestly, it's short enough that I think... Uh, another thing that's happened is uh, we're recording this uh, the night that the Mario Maker Direct has come out. And so uh, I think we'll do a little bonus uh, watching through the Mario Maker uh, Direct, because I haven't seen it yet because I was working all day. I um, have already seen it, but it's really cool, so I want to see it again. Yeah. Um, I, I, apparently he's into Mario or something. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you have no clue. <laughs> some, sh- some, some, sh- some shit like that. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and watch it and uh, react to it live. And if you don't want that, I'm putting a link uh, for the timestamp that you can click to skip over this section if you just want to go straight to the Smash stuff. And also, uh, before we start, just a little bit of housekeeping. Hello to all the people who started watching uh, this channel because of the Who's Lines It Anyway video and are now wondering what this thing is. Uh, this is a podcast I've been doing for a while uh, with one of my best friends where we talk about Super Smash Brothers. If that's a thing you're into, fantastic. If not, I know it's a far cry from Who's Lines It Anyway, but... We also both bonded a lot over whose lies it anyway when we first became friends. So yeah, I mean, when maybe we, we'll, when did we maybe, start this this Smash talk? Like 2010, 11. We started doing Smash videos. I think I started doing it 2011. You started before. Yeah, there's a 2009 for me or 2008. Yeah, I think <laughs> I started. I think I started making Smash talk in 2011. Um, and then you know, like I take time off when we're in between games and stuff like that. But I brought it back as like a podcast for this. We, we've been doing it every now and then, and it's just a good time. Um, yeah. You can always check out the Discord in the link below. Um, be, we'd love to have you there. Uh, we talk about all sorts of things there. We've got uh, movie discussions, uh, smash talk, believe it or not, uh, random memes, stuff like that. And we're not one of those Discords that has a not safe for work board, so you don't got to worry about any of that shit popping up. Also, we're not an underage dating roleplay server either, so that's... That is that is also good. That's all. That's also a good. Uh, that's all. That's also a feather in my cap. <laughs> all right. So without further ado, uh, if if you want to see us react to Mario Maker, here we go. If not, skip to this time in the video. Oh, that's cute. Little magnetic blocks. Isn't it? I love the little intro to this. I wish this was actually something you could do in real life. That's the next step, right? You have Mario Maker as a video game, and then you have it as a physical thing. You could do you could do some cool stuff with with uh, uh, AR. You could do some cool stuff with like augmented reality. Yeah. And in, in this concept. In Super Mario Maker Two, you can create the Super Mario courses of your dreams, and play courses created by other people from around the globe. So how much of it is just you know the original Mario Maker, but now on the Switch with more features? Uh, pretty much these first few minutes. Now, okay. Let's jump right into the basics. This whole section here, I was constantly going like, okay, where's the new stuff? Where's the new stuff? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but there's a lot of people who never got a Wii U, so they have to... Exactly. No, this is necessary. So... This was definitely the biggest missing thing from porting Wii U games. There's still a couple that I really think they need to port. I really want Xenoblade Chronicles X. That's my I want big one. Xenoblade Chronicles. I want Wonderful 101. Um, it'd be people nice if Star Fox up, Zero came over. People have brought up Tokyo Mirage. Yeah, that'd also be great. Because that one would come over so easily. With things like Star Fox Zero and uh, Wonderful 101, you'd have to, like, change some control scheme stuff. But, like, stuff like Tokyo Mirage Sessions, man, you can just bring that shit over. Oh, definitely. Yeah, Xenoblade, you have to change the interface a little bit, but honestly, it'd be way better anyway. Yeah, you could, you just make it so that you actually pause to bring up a map and stuff. Like, yeah. whatever. Um, it's it's not nearly as big a deal as like Wonderful 101's sections where you would be where you would be using two screens or uh, Star Fox Zero's Star Fox Zero would have to change its control scheme to the control scheme that people wanted in the first place. So you know nothing lost. Yeah. Did they add any new graphical style? I wasn't paying course, attention entirely. Uh, this is still just all old stuff. They haven't shown any new things online. yet. 
Okay, no worries. I mean, there's little things here and there, but like they're gonna detail all these things later. Like, like slopes. Yeah, here we go. Here's the new shit. Time to showcase some of this game's new tools, course parts, and features. It's only been two minutes. Just pick a slopes. And set the length to create a slope. Oh, thank God, slopes. It's a beautiful thing. Huh? That was oh, a big thing people wanted. Are an option too. Well, it was a huge part of classic Mario games. Everyone's mm -hmm. greatest fear, Angry Sun, is here. Oh he no! Following an attack. Oh, I hate this guy. Remember the snake block? Oh hell yeah! Right? You can determine its trajectory by freely. I mean, I guess the I guess the yeah, skull conveyor belt thing is kind of did really this, fast. but no, like this is still a different thing. You get to make the whole like pathway for it. You'd be surprised how many uses there Yo, are. this is back too. Hell yeah. You can set up traps like this I, I forgot that some of these were even like in, not in the first one. Right. Like, I, I forgot some of these existed. Change tracks. Yeah, you can do a lot of cool or stuff with these things. Oh my directions. gosh. Exactly. There's going to be so many cool ideas for stages. Right Mario Maker game. is not my kind of game, but I really Perfect. like seeing what other people do with it. I, I'm kind of in the same boat. I actually, I thought I'd be really into designing courses, but I got more into playing and watching people play. Which I'm, more I'm still into, excited like, for. I'm still going to buy it anyway. So. I'm more into watching people play it, I think. I, it's just not, like, my thing. But it's really cool to see what people, like, come up with. Yeah. In this course theme, you can freely set the water level. Yo, you can straight up do water maybe levels. Half the course yes. Should be underwater. Or maybe the water level should change over time? You can even do changing water levels? Jesus. Check out all these tools, man. And water isn't the only thing you can flood a course with. They just keep adding things that I keep forgetting. Oh, you can do it with lava, too. Yo, scrolling levels. Yep. In a uh, you could do scrolling before, right? I don't even remember if you could or not, but now you can completely look at this, adjust it, the speed and the trajectory. And... That's crazy. You could okay, there weren't scrolling levels, but you could um, you could like force it to be scrolling basically. Right. Uh, with like boxes and stuff. If you, yeah, if you designed the level correctly. That's what it was. Yo, vertical sub areas. Area from view and prevent scrolling from revealing it. Create a solid line of blocks perpendicular to the scroll direction. And voila, Dude. Secret room. That's such a nice Ball little uh looks like it's coming little from touch. Mario, yeah. Yeah. It is. You can it's just like a the four cardinal It's such a small thing, but it improves quite a bit. Function. Watch out. Let's you let's you use uh the space a lot more efficiently. Check this thing out. What? I think this, I think those are my favorite things. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Isn't that cool? Find hard to reach areas and tempt players. I just wish that coins and stuff were actually useful, but since you only play like one course at a time, basically. What the fuck? <laughs> Stick one on an enemy, or perhaps go with something more sinister. Pass a Joy-Con controller to a friend, and you can Yo. put this together on a single screen. Okay. So here's the thing. Way. If it's co-op, oh, check this out. Miles is gonna defeat all the dry bones. Reach the goal as Super Mario. Oh. Huh. You can set clear conditions. Interesting. You have a wide range to choose from. The variety of courses you can make with this. From enemies to allies to items. Yo, the twister. Suck up anything. Unsuspecting passersby will fall victim to the icicle. Okay, with it being co-op, what's going to happen is Miles is going to make me get this so that we there can we sit go. there and like make courses together. Yo! That's the best Yoshi. Anything attached to them. Watch out for Boom Boom. The mad lad will chase after you, swinging his Did they just call Boom Boom a mad lad? Yeah. And there's still more Did Nintendo discover. just make a Mad Lad joke? Not sure how to use something. Try out story mode. What? In story mode. mode Mario sets out no fucking way. <laughs> and to do so, he'll face an entire game's worth of courses in search of coins. Talk to the taskmaster to accept a job from the bulletin board. And All right, so well, definitely at least streaming this. Mario can clear the course. He'll earn coins as a reward. 
There being a story mode genuinely does make me more interested in it. Me too. By Nintendo in story mode, showcasing a variety of tools, course parts, and features. As you play, you'll see many examples. I'm gonna end up getting this. Yep. <laughs> yep. This was the tipping point for me, at least, for sure. <laughs> when I saw the co-op, I was like, Ah, oh, no, Miles is gonna make me buy this. But now that it has like a story mode, it's like, I, I'm probably gonna do it. Okay, here we go. New sequel, new course themes. Desert. Oh. Ooh. Snow. Yes, dude, the snow levels are always my favorite. Forest. They're just like beautiful to me. Dude, that and sky. That remix. New music yeah. Written They're going to talk about that. Super Mario composer Koji Kondo. These are all like really interesting Impact remixes. The classic sound of the Super Mario series. We've also got a new course part that makes these course themes even more fun. The moon. What? Check this out. Tap this icon here and day becomes night. No way. Every sun, Mario will lose a life. But if you hit the moon, you'll wipe out a screen full of enemies. What? At night, expect a surprise or two, depending on the theme. In the ground theme, Goombas will float. What? The underground will turn upside down. In a ghost what? Night, the lights will dim. And in the sky, gravity itself will be reduced. The desert will get hit by a sandstorm. While the terrain of the snow theme will become really slippery. I... And the forest's usually pleasant waters will be as poisonous as they can. I have to buy this just because of, like, the achievement that it is as a game, man. I'll probably put, like, maybe 15 hours into it total, but, like, I'm gonna have to buy it. Me too. Just to, like, support, like... How cool this is. 3D World. The Super Mario 3D World game style is finally available. The way this it doesn't actually go isometric though, does it? It doesn't, but it's pretty cool. Okay. Oh, that background. That you can't do in any other style. Skip squeak. Meowser. Without Cat Mario. Climbing walls. Scratching. Basically, though, this theme is like its own game. Yeah. I mean, the cat changes so much about it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's that's a completely different game. That is 100% a completely different game. Be careful, though. Enemies will make use of them as well. Yo, you can do the... Yeah. So you can make your own path when there's no platform to walk on. Yeah, that's this is this is entirely different. Yeah, I don't know if you saw it or not. When you put on this theme, you have to start a course anew. You can't switch an yeah. old course to this theme. Yeah, makes sense. I wish we could make it isometric, but that also like I understand like it would completely that 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 that's a huge like massive jump in difficulty when it comes to designing things. Yeah. Yo, that's that's cool. Oh, that came back. Blinking blocks phase in and out. Dude, those are back to... That's crazy, man. Make sure to carefully time those jumps. Just use a wall jump. Come on. The track block will follow Lazy. You draw. The blue one won't move until you step on it. The mushroom trampoline yields a satisfying bounce. The this is why... Creeper, yeah, they just made an entirely new game on top of that. Dude, the product yeah. creepers are really cool. This is this is great, man. Look at Skip Squeaks. No. What? What the fuck? Okay, the amount of levels that are gonna be made just around that car is uh is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna play them all. <laughs> Pom Pom's back. The art of a doppelganger. I don't know why I'm saying back. It's the first time they're in Mario Maker. I guess I just mean back from the series into this. I don't know. It's so powerful. It can break through walls. Many other familiar faces from Super Mario. We're gonna get so many fucking courses. Yeah. Like, seeing the stuff that people made with the first one, this is like This is gonna be a whole other level, man. 
Course World is an online hub where players from around the world can share their carefully crafted courses. Was that dog a mascot of the first one too, or did they just come up with that for this? It, it was in the first one. Okay. That's how little I played the first one. Search by tags like puzzle solving. I got the game and I was just like, yeah, it's just not my thing. I'm just not like a I, I wanted to be in the same boat, but I'm still gonna get this one. I wish I was more into like building stuff, but like I never got into Minecraft. I never got into the closest, the closest thing to a building game I get into is stuff like Age of Empires or Civilization. You know, I got more and that's, and that's way not more quite the same thing. With like character customization, I got way more into that than course. That's true. You are huge on character customization. I don't really care about character customization though. Miles is really big on that. In Course World, each player has a maker profile. Oh. If other players like your what an courses, unfortunate me. earn maker points. But on top of being successful, why not be stylish? Customize your maker life points? Like I hardly know her. That you unlock by completing various objectives. I'm sorry. Test your skills by trying to clear as many courses as possible before you get a game over. Select a difficulty and course Wait. will be queued up at random. Oh, the okay, never mind. Available on Course World. I thought I was going to let you play as Toad and Peach. And you might earn a top spot on the leaderboards. On top of that, there's a new mode in Super Mario Maker 2 that'll let you play together with others. You you were almost on the nose there, Chris. Oh my god. In course world, you can enjoy multiplayer with other players from around the world. Oh my god. Do they have their actual differences or is it just cosmetic? Cosmetic. All right, that makes sense. Mode, up to four players face off in a side It'd be cool if you could actually like design levels specifically for Peach or specifically for Toad with their yeah. unique attributes, you know? That would be neat. I guess that's what you do with the next one, you know? Next step. Mario Maker 3, that's what it's got to be. Because there's... I can't think of much else you do with the, with the next installment, you know? It seems like they got everything here. They, like, you have so much freedom in this version. But I guess it's what everybody thought about the first one, too, and now this one is, like, a huge improvement. No, because people had complaints about the first one. But it feels like they included all the elements that we didn't have the first time, and then added a bunch of stuff anyway. This is definitely... I want to see this done in 3D World style. But yes, man, it's like every time... This is three, because this is 3D World style of gameplay, that competitive co-op. Yeah. Is that every time they, they announce something new in this Direct, it's like, oh my god, there's so many more possibilities. And then they show off something else new. Oh my god, so many possibilities. <laughs> there is so much stuff in this. Exactly. It's huge. You won't be rated in this mode, but you can Yo, check out Yo, shout out to that games. remix. By the way, if this is such a good remix. With versus play in mind, consider using the multiplayer versus tag. It's a great you hearing this? Who love to yeah, I'm listening now. It's so good. Did they change like the tempo or the affectation of it, or is it just that the instrumentation is different? That's not tempo is not the word. But it's not like they messed with like the, like they got jazzy with it. New challenges. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a musician. I can't. I don't know the words. New modes, and lots of new ways to have fun. Super Mario Maker 2 will come down the pipe on June 28th. If you're interested. Yo, that's in not far away. No. 2, we've got a couple that's a month and a half away. First, there's the Super Mario Maker 2 plus Nintendo Switch Online Bundle, which is available as both a physical and digital release, and includes a 12-month... That's smart, though. This is, like, a Nintendo really... Online. If you're already a Nintendo Switch Online member... Yo, okay, including it including it as a bundle where you get a discount for the online if you don't already have it is also a good... Uh... Well, did you hear? If you already have it, you get an extra 12 months at that price. The Nintendo Switch Game Voucher That's pretty tight. Offer. Paid Nintendo Switch Online members can buy a pair of Nintendo... Nintendo Switch game vouchers for just $99.99. Each voucher can be redeemed for an eligible digital game. Choose from some of your favorite Nintendo Wait, Switch what? titles. For example, it's it's really complex, but basically you pay $99.99 and you get two games at a $20 discount. Oh, yeah. So it's a weird, they pay, worded it a really weird way, but basically so you just pay 20 bucks. So you just pay 100 for those games instead of six instead of 120 for those games. Yes. Yeah. 
Oh my god. Let's go Pikachu. Forgot about that. I think I would probably go with Let's Go Eevee, though. Me too. I, I kind of want to play it. I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I'm in that boat where it's like, I want to play it, but I'm not interested enough in it for $60. Yeah. As well as the game store on Nintendo it looks so cute, though, but I have enough things to play already. I need to stop. I'm just going to wait for 8th gen. I need to play what I got. <laughs> I need to get my Wii U fixed so I can finish the Wii U games that I never finished, like Xenoblade X. Look, uh, Mario Maker eSport. Um... And that was it. <laughs> that, was really, that was really cute. Uh, yeah, I, I like that. It seems like a really solid game. I'm happy for everybody that is going to get a lot out of those tools. I just don't have the patience to, now, to, to make the, things. The big thing that everyone's bringing up is if you look at that section in the menu that shows Super Mario 3D World, it says extra game styles, and there's a blank spot next to Super Mario 3D World. What else could go there? That's what people are speculating. Odyssey? Right some people think Odyssey. Some people think Super Mario Brothers 2 USA. Oh, I would love that, actually. Um, could, because that could... would also change the gameplay a lot with being able to pick up and throw enemies and stuff. Yeah. Um, but maybe it is like a 2D Odyssey type of thing where you can control people with Cappy. I don't know. Those are, those are it feels to be the weird two biggest to not show speculations that, like... I see. That seemed like we would get... I mean, I guess they could be holding on to something for E3. Exactly, because E3 is still before the game releases, like five days before or like six days before or something. That's true. Man, if they if they drop that... Because like, that, like, this Direct would have sold anybody who was interested. And oh, then yeah. like anybody that's still on the fence after this, if at E3, like a week before the game drops, they reveal that there's going to be an entire odyssey mode to it on top of everything else <laughs> that's just unbelievable oh man I'm, I'm curious it does seem like there'll be something else so i yeah. guess yeah because I, I was expecting they would drop all the info here but yeah e if it's coming out that soon after e3 they could totally drop some stuff at e3 yep that's stellar that was cute so yeah i'm definitely i'm definitely getting that game <laughs> Oh, I don't know when I'm going to get it, but it's going to happen at some point. Uh, right, eventually. Yeah. Um, eventually, I'll own every game. Um, <laughs> I have a, I have a goal, I have a compulsion to play every game that is significant in any way. I got and some games that are still unwrapped, or, yeah, wrapped up, that are still wrapped still up. Still unopened. Unopened. Yeah, I have a, do my Steam library? I <laughs> I have an unopened Bayonetta 2 for Wii U and an o unopened Paper Mario Color Splash that I've had I start, for a while. I, started I think playing, I still have an unopened Kirby's Epic Yarn. <laughs> I started playing uh, the first Bayonetta on the Wii U, and then my Wii U broke. Shit. So, yeah. Max broke it by being really bad at Mario. Yeah, so that was... No, that was good. I'm, I'm very impressed. I, yeah. was not, I was not expecting all the stuff that they put in there. Me either. That's, that's I was expecting some new features. I wasn't expecting... I mean, they really lived up to it being a sequel, you know what I mean? It's got so many new features that you can't call it the same Mario Maker. They didn't have to do any of that. People would have been fine with it just being Mario Maker but on the Switch. Oh yeah, people wouldn't have thought twice. Maybe if it, you could just have done Mario Maker with slopes, and people would have been like, this is good. Alright, and Shadies and Lentilman. The reason you're all here... We're going to talk about a video game about other video games. That's right. It's a video game's video game. What what has happened since the last Smash Talk? When was the last? This last Smash Talk was a while ago. Yeah, I, I want to say... Gosh, it was, it, was before, it was before Joker came out. I'm pretty sure it was before Joker came out. I'm going to feel bad if we look back and like, oh yeah, we actually did talk about Joker already. I we don't definitely think we did. didn't. We no, didn't even I, know when he was going to come out because they announced when he was coming out the day before he came out. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So <laughs> that's what, which is one of the things we want to talk about. Okay, first off, I know we, I know we think, talked about Piranha Plant. I think we talked about some like rumors of other stuff. We did talk yeah. about Piranha Plant, and we talked about a lot of rumors. It was a live thing where we were taking a lot of questions and stuff. That's but. right. It was the live smash. Yeah. So we got a lot of weird questions. Uh, I made that. <laughs> I made that. I I totally fooled you with a joke about Rhydon. What do you think about Joker, man? 
Uh, I like joking. You know, the, my, my big thing right, is I still haven't played Persona 5. Now with Persona 5 R announced, I'm just going to wait for that because I have a PS4, so I'll just get that. And so, you know, I don't think I understand all the references or anything. But um, his playstyle was pretty fun for me. I mean, the way that I interpreted him was that he seems, you know, a bit weak without our scene but then once you get our scene he's like stronger than most people uh and so that's a fun new play style i think uh i like the way he was implemented i remember one of the things that what people didn't necessarily complain about but people did bring up was that it seemed like a lot more of his attacks um had animations that seemed at least either referenced or even borrowed from other characters um, more so than any other Smash newcomer before. And so people kind of brought up a question of, you know, well, you know, is that really, you know, it, you know, what does that mean? Um, I do have to admit, when I was first playing as Joker, whenever I did his forward smash, I was like, that looks really familiar. I can't figure out why that that movement looks so familiar to me. And then it wasn't until someone did like a side-by-side -side comparison of attacks. I'm like, oh yeah, that's literally Falco's forward smash. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> so, ultimately, I don't think it's a big deal. I can't compare enough to, like, Persona, because I haven't played it, to go, oh, yeah, that matches, or yeah, that doesn't. Um, but it, I, I, he works. I think he still feels really unique. Good. Um, like, I, I don't... I don't yeah. Like, there's the Persona mechanic, or the Rebel Gauge, or whatever. But, uh... Then also, like, he has a projectile that works like no other projectile. Is that the, uh, the side B or the B? Uh, I got side B. Yeah, okay. I like that. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, the damage over time is, like, really fascinating. Uh, he can do stuff with his gun that nobody else can. I never use the gun when I play him. Well, I like, uh, I like how you can, a couple things I like with it. I like that you can, like, dodge between shots, and I like how, uh, have you done this? Have you used the gun and then you jump? You'll do this, like, spinning yeah. gun downward attack? That's so cool. Yeah, I know all those moves, but I, actually using them in a fight is another thing. And, like, yeah. using them, like, like, effectively using that in a fight in a way that doesn't just get your ass kicked. Uh, that, that's, <laughs> that's, like, another thing entirely. Uh. Um, so... Yeah, I, I, I know what it can do, but I've struggled to actually, like, utilize it to any extent. Um, I do find that there's a lot of crossover between the way that you play Greninja and the way that you play him. Uh, so that's oh. been that's been a bit easier for me. Uh, there's a lot of, like, kind of the same mentality. And also, you know, he's got a drill kick. So, he that's does. one thing. Um, yeah, I really enjoy him. What really amazes me about Joker is the way how all out they went in terms of including him and making him feel like he belonged in Smash. I was like, just about to bring that. All of the spirits, the music, the way that his stage has a unique mechanic. Like Yeah, the way his the way his victory screens work, the changing colors, the looping music. Uh oh god, especially if you finish a fight with his final smash. That what is a such touch. a brilliant thing. Yeah, what a that, touch. that that extra ending screen that you can get in that uh, it's it's just very cool. It, it was very much like they looked at Persona and they were like, how many ways can we kind of fuse this with Smash? They captured that essence of like the style of Persona because even as someone like me who doesn't know much about Persona, I feel like that is one of the highlights of the series that this, is, this, is the, how stylish it is. And I feel like they captured that. I mean, let's not act like the reason Persona 5 did so well and is so well and like got so much attention compared to the rest of the series was because of that initial trailer that they dropped. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. That that, that initial trailer uh, set to... Um, is it is it Wake Up, Get Up, Get Out There? I think it was. The song that it was set to? That and, like, I don't just, remember. Just like, the, the, it was such a stylish trailer. It didn't matter that it didn't really show anything. It was so incredibly stylish. Everybody was hooked purely off the visuals and the music. And, like, and that, that is the selling point. Yeah, and like bringing that into Smash was like such a such a cool thing. Great and, idea. Uh, yeah, and it has me really hopeful, and also just kind of like rethinking uh, what else he's wanting to do with the fighter pass because he went so, he did so much with Joker. Yeah, he there's a whole team doing it, but Sakurai is like the stand-in for all of it, I guess. 
Well, yeah, you know, um, you, you generalize. <laughs> he's the idea boy, yeah. Didn't they say that the, uh, all the DLC characters were going to be out, like the entire Fighter Pass would be done by February 2020? That's right. Uh, that is nine months away. Yes. We've got four characters left. Yeah, I think, well, isn't that averaging about a new character every two months? Yeah, but we haven't even heard about the next character yet. We're pretty sure, I mean, just off of, you know, that timing and rumors and stuff, we're pretty sh We're a lot of people believe that there's going to be just a character drop at E3. Just like, bam, here's a new character. That's what I'm wondering, because, like, before, like, with DLC, the way they did it for 4 is, you know, we'd, like, know about a character for a while, and then before they came out, they'd get, they'd get showed off, like, right beforehand, and they'd reveal who the next person was, like, right there. Well, one of the things, less. too, is with Smash 4 DLC, like, a, a, a lot of characters leaked super early. Um, so there was that, where they're being a lot more cautious this time. I mean, even then, we, we've gotten some stuff, so... I do wonder how they're keeping it under wraps as well as they are. Yeah. Because, um, like, the, the, the initial game got hit with some pretty bad leaks. But, like, they managed to keep... Quite a yeah. few big surprises this time around. What it sounds like is that uh, a lot of the sources of the of the big leakers that were going around this time were people that were uh, getting inside information from Namco, and um, apparently the Smash DLC is all being handled in house at Nintendo, so the leaks aren't getting out as much. Interesting, which would explain why people like Vergaben might not be as accurate on the DLC, even though they were pretty accurate on the main roster. Exactly. That's interesting. Now, apparently, Vergamin has recently heard some stuff, but he's not publishing it at all because he's not able to verify it, it sounds like. So, you know, it's okay. all just hearsay to him. It's so interesting, like, to just announce, to finally show off Joker and then be like, oh, by the way, he comes out tomorrow. Yeah. And say, and say, and say nothing about the next character. I'm so, like, I'm so just, like, completely caught off guard on, like, what to even expect. It feels like the structure that we come to expect from, like, DLC release schedules for Smash has just been completely thrown off. Uh, which is kind of exciting, but it's also, like, nerve-wracking, because we still have no idea what the next thing's gonna be. No. But it, has, you know... but it has to come out faster, because we knew about Joker for a while. We did, we about, yeah. We knew about Joker for a while. And so that's why I'm, like, nervous about the whole February 2020 thing, is, like... If they all come out at the speed that Joker did, we're not going to make February 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is incredibly likely that we get, like, another thing at E3 where they reveal who the character is and showcase him and then are like, and he comes out tomorrow. Yeah, it's like, whoa! <laughs> I, mean, I mean, E3, they're probably going to talk about Animal Crossing a lot because that's, like yeah. that's their big holiday game this year. I think so, yeah. Because uh, yeah. It'd be Mario nice Mike to get Mario some details on... Uh... You know, oh, maybe they can show off some more Pokemon. You know, they might do their own thing with that. Pokemon Company has a tendency to do their own thing. Yeah. Um, it'd be nice well, to get some more details on three group. houses, but I mean, that's coming soon, so I'm guessing that's going to be part of it. It feels like they're banking on Animal Crossing as the big holiday game. Which um, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the most in-demand titles. Uh, and it's maybe finally we'll get coming. A little more. Maybe we'll get a little more on Luigi's Mansion 3. Oh, yeah, I forgot that was happening. It's really exciting. Yeah. Um, I, I'm guessing we're not going to see any Metroid Prime 4 until, like, next year. Yeah. I, I'm hoping that we hear at least something. or Just a confirmation something. of, like, this is still happening. <laughs> yeah. Just because it was a while ago since they, like, revealed it. And then I know that they scrapped it and, like, started over. But it'd still be nice to just get something. I'm not expecting much, but it would be nice to get something. You know, I, I do feel more confident now that Retro's working on it, so that's probably better to scrap it and start it there than to, you know, try to put out something that wasn't going to be great. If it was bad enough that they realized that they had to stop, then I'm glad that they stopped. <laughs> well, that's also impressive that they decided, yeah, this is so bad, we need to start over. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Because they very easily could have just, because it would have sold no matter what. It would have sold, yeah, it just would have been probably not remembered very well. <laughs> yeah. Fondly, fondly. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to see that they want to see Metroid succeed. So so we think it's possible that they'll be dropping a character at E3. Oh, yeah. Who are you thinking? 
it's hard to know, you know, especially because we've gotten no announcements who it's going to be. But, of course, you know, there are some very clear rumors on who it is. There's always rumors. There's always. Um, oh, man. If we want to be just really, really direct with the rumor, right, um, we've known for a while. Not, you know, you can never truly know. But, I mean, part of the old Smash Ultimate leaks was that they were going to have a new Square Enix character. That's been something in a long time. That comes from the same line of information as, like, everything else that happened. You know, Isabel becoming playable, and Cinnamor becoming playable, Ken being an Echo, you know, pretty much everything. So, it's, it would seem weird if that one piece wound up not being true. Then, from the official data mines, you know, we did already get a piece of character info under the code name Brave. Um, and the debate, of course, is like what Brave stands for. But there's no correlation that makes more sense, right? There are ones that people have connected. It's like, well, Brave could mean this and Brave could mean that. There is, there's no correlation, though, that makes more sense, seemingly, than, than what people have been speculating for a long time, which is that it correlates to some sort of Dragon Quest character. You know, whether that's Erdrick or the classic one or Eight or something newer. That's just the most direct line we've seen in the way that the word is used and the way that that character is referred to as. So, Sora. <laughs> yes, that's right. But th And that's the thing, is that then people are like, well, Brave could mean Sora, or it could mean Brave yeah. Default, or it could mean yeah. you know, Brave Vesperia, yeah. or hey, it could I'm mean... Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow your mind. <laughs> Every protagonist of a JRPG is brave. Right. So, so if you're just going by, this character's brave, yeah, so are a lot of other ones. Exactly. That's the thing is that, like, yes, the thing you, is, can, you can connect brave to a lot of things, the but thing is, who, does brave, it, who does it correlate most to? Brave is used as shorthand for Erdrick. Yes, exactly. That's like, the thing. You can't... It's, it's hard to say that Brave attributes more to another character than one. If you wanted to speculate on, gee, who is the most likely to this correlating to? Well, there you go. <laughs> like, they straight up... I can't remember, like, exactly how it is, but something about, like, the way that... Something about, like, the Japanese characters, like, the for Brave and Air Drinkers. I, I can't even remember. Yeah, I don't but, know. Like, but, like, there, the, the main thing is, there was... Uh, so, so Air Drink has, like this iconic shield and uh one of the people that works on smash i think it was posted an instagram photo of like a replica of that shield that he has and he described it as brave's shield right and that's not like and people are like well that doesn't directly mean that brave is airdrick it's like it doesn't but it does mean that airdrick is referred to as the brave one yeah, like that's that's. I don't know how much more direct you want it to be in Japanese without them flat in, out saying it in Japan. <laughs> like every, if you're talking about brave as a personality trait, that's going to describe any hero from a JRPG. There's but if been you're so many people. But if you're talking so about it as a label, trying, yeah. If you're talking there's about it saying, as a label, Erdrick is the one who's referred to as brave as a title. In see, there's things there's things like people trying to like connect Brave to Banjo Kazooie, and it's like there's no way you're gonna make more connections with that than you are with Airdrick. Oh, you know, uh, I I can't even think of the joke. Yeah, and it's possible that like it just doesn't mean anything. It's incredibly possible that it doesn't mean anything. And totally. That we're, like, reading yeah, too much we into never it. we never truly know. But one thing that I was talking to some people about is. If they were going to just, like, shadow drop a character at E3, I think that might be a good choice. Because, you know, whether or not it's an expected character or a character a lot of people want or a character a lot of people don't want, but you kind of get a wide spectrum with, with Dragon Quest stuff and Smash Brothers on that. You know, what, whatever the case is, 
you know, you can, you know, drop that character there um, because it's not a character that I, I think anyway, compared to a lot of other characters that would have built up the same uh, international hype. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's much bigger in Japan than America. And that's so, just kind of the way it's going to be. So just kind of dropping him unexpectedly at E3, I think, makes a lot of sense for two reasons. You know, one, you can, you know, put him out there and have him be like, oh, hey, here's this new character, you know, right away, you can get them. And there's not going to be this kind of waiting period of like, eh, is this a character that I'm really interested in or not? It's, it's there. And secondly, you can also then use E3 to showcase another character potentially as like and here's the character that's coming out two months from now that you're going to be all excited about can you imagine if it's like erdrick comes out tomorrow and in two months doom guy yeah something like that that's a, tra exactly a trailer what I'm saying. a trailer that has erdrick and doom guy together <laughs> that'd be something but that's but that's the kind of thing i mean is that is i i you know whether you know no matter what the perception you have of dragon quest in smash is I think it's a good type of character because I don't think it is super hype inducing all around the world to, to drop in and then follow it up with a character that is more internationally hype inducing. Another reason why I think it's possible to happen at uh, uh, E3 is that Dragon Quest has been having quite a few releases uh, yeah. lately. And Dragon Quest Builders 2 is a thing right now. Um, I'm uh, I'm really excited for when Dragon Quest uh, 11 comes out on Switch because they're adding so same. much shit to it. Same. They're, like, adding, like... Aren't they adding, like, a classic mode or something? Yeah, they're it? adding, like, a 16-bit mode. They're adding orchestral music to the international release, which, if you don't know, that's a huge deal. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, like, with all of that going on, it'd be super easy to, like, drop Erdrick in, like, tied into it. And also, Square Enix always does a presentation as well. So they will be at E3. Oh, Chris, totally random. I didn't know this, because I never played it. Did you know the 3DS port of Dragon Quest VIII has an alternate ending? No. Yeah, see, I never bothered playing the 3DS port, because I played the original, so I was like, eh, why bother? But it has an alternate ending. Why? Uh, fan demand, actually. That's fascinating. Um... I don't think... Is it alright if I talk about it? I don't think it's any kind of major spoiler. Here's the thing. I love Dragon Quest. The stories aren't exactly like Shakespeare. Okay, well... You know, it's not a it's, huge deal if you get the story okay, of okay. a Dragon Quest game spoiled. So, so normally in Dragon Quest Day, at the end of the game, you marry the princess. Mm -hmm. Now you choose between her or Jessica. Huh. Yeah, and then you just live a life of adventuring with a Jessica. Adventuring with a Jessica? I, with with Jessica. I, my tongue slipped. Uh, it's all good. But like... Because you were thinking about Jessica. <laughs> um... But no, I thought I thought that was that was that was cool that they had that as an option. I guess a lot of people wanted that. I actually uh, honestly wouldn't have thought twice about it. But that just uh, like that just reveals so much about like gamer culture. Uh. Yeah, maybe. And they're just like, they're just like, I need to be able to marry my waifu with this game, please. <laughs> um, why can't I? Why can't I marry the girl that I can put in a bunny outfit for the entire game? But see, honestly, you know, I was glad Dragon Quest Eight was coming to 3DS, but I didn't think about getting it because I was like, I already experienced this, uh, so I had no idea until, like, like I said about like a few weeks ago, I found that out that there was an alternate ending. I'm like, oh, I kind of, I no kind of hope that they port that over to the Switch. <sighs> a lot of people do, but a lot of people think it's not very likely. Cause I would like, love it. Cause like, I, I don't know. I just, I haven't really Man, touched my the 3DS since the Switch. The Switch is just like a better 3DS. I like the 3DS. My problem with Dragon Quest Eight on 3DS is it is such a graphical downgrade from the PS2. <laughs> that and also like, it's such a long game that like the idea yeah. that you're staring at that small handheld the entire time with those graphics. It's just yeah. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't really. Some people were, like, really getting on, like, the Sora bandwagon again, thinking that it was going to happen because of Kingdom Hearts 3. And I just... I just don't see it. Like, I don't I, know. I might argue that as a character, 
Sora is more recognizable and iconic than any individual Dragon Quest hero. I would agree with that. But I also don't believe that's all that matters. Like, I would say the same thing about um, Castlevania. The series itself is more recognized than any individual Belmont. Um, I also I also think... I, I think I would amend that statement. Like, I do think he's more recognizable than Erdrick to most people. Uh, and well, Than any Dragon Quest character. I wouldn't say that he's more iconic. Okay. But, but my point still is that Dragon Quest as a series is such a bigger deal to me than Kingdom Hearts. I wouldn't necessarily be upset if Sora got in over a Dragon Quest thing. I would just feel like, eh, Dragon Quest would have been better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is like, it's, it's, it's one of the, it's, it's one of like the old guard. You know, it's one of it's you know, one of the it only and Final Fantasy are like the defining, you know, RPG series that, you know, yeah. started the whole thing. And if you want to get on that, if you want to get on that, Dragon Quest came first. Yeah. Final Fantasy popularized the JRPG, but Dragon Quest created it. Yeah. Like Final Fantasy just took what Dragon Quest had and they made it more digestible. Mm -hmm. that, that, that was it. That was really it. And it'd be um, one thing if, like, that's all Dragon Quest did was just start it. Um, but it's continued. It's it's up to its 11th game, and not to mention all the side games. You know, you all your your rocket slimes and your crossovers and your Dragon Quest builders. This is a huge deal. And I think one thing also that it does have uh, that Final Fantasy doesn't. Final Fantasy from game to game, especially after the first couple, um really differentiates and changes from game to game uh whereas dragon quest pretty much always has like a unified aesthetic and world well not world but like the world changes but like it's still the same stuff in it all the time um yeah and and some people would see that as an advantage and some people would say that as a, as a disadvantage i think it um, gives you i think it gives you a lot of things to pull from to do joker style like special touches oh i see yeah the fact the yeah, fact that the, the fact that the fact that there are songs that have been in the series from the beginning uh the fact that there are enemies like slimes that are incredibly important uh in some games and are playable yeah. characters in some games but are also just common enemies that have been in literally every game uh and are recognizable in their own right despite them just being a blob yeah, there's 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 a lot of stuff in Dragon Quest that you could do uh, aesthetically. A lot of people bring up why with Cloud it's uh, it's it says like Final Fantasy VII and not like Final Fantasy as a series, and I think it's because Final Fantasy changes so much from game to game. It's like Fire Emblem. Yeah, well, Fire Emblem doesn't change all that. Well, Fire Emblem changed between the rest of the series and then Awakening. But like, <laughs> well, but you, you know what I meant in terms of just cast. But I, I get what you're saying because Final Fantasy does more than that. It's it's the cast and the aesthetic and the yeah. way the world is structured. Yeah. And, and in more recent games, the way the gameplay is structured. Yeah, absolutely. Like it is it is wildly different. But Dragon Quest, you have a lot of the same music, the same aesthetics, the same graphics. Like it is it is always the same graphical style. It is always the same music. It is always the same general gameplay. There are, there are differences between, like, uh, Dragon Quest Eight. You know, you have, like, a set party. And then, like, Dragon Quest Nine Or Seven, Whichever one I was playing. I think it was Nine. Um, where it goes back to, like, that system where there is no such thing as, a def as an actual defined character. You're making a party full of uh, fully customizable characters that can swap between any class that you want. But because of that, like, the, it's always the same classes. Like, or at least always the same weapons. You know, there's always boomerangs. Boomerangs are, like, a really uh, kind of unique boomerangs. And they have whips. Uh, and then they have, you know, it's like swords and spears and stuff like that. Um, yeah, but it's, it's always interesting that yeah, boomerangs have always been kind of one of their, like, main weapons. Yeah, even from the beginning. Like, boomerangs have been, like, a thing. They have, they have weapons that are 
for every situation. They got weapons that attack the... The way the boomerangs and whips work in Dragon Quest is really interesting to me. But yeah, and then Dragon Quest also has, like, its own specific magic uh, that is in every game as well. And the um, and magic has great names in the localization. Sizzle! <laughs> Ka-clang! Ka-clang! Kaboom! Yes. <laughs> Sap! Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good... There's a lot of good magic. A lot of good music. I don't know, it just... It is, like, a super iconic series. And it, it has a lot of fans in the West, but... It, not so much as it has in the East, and I think because of that, a lot of us over here kind of underestimate how big a deal it is. Yeah, um, since the you know rumors have come out about it, like more people are on board with it and kind of seeing. Because I think a lot of thing is just a lot of people weren't exposed, and when they saw, you know, gosh, who's this character that's so rumored? Oh, gee, they come from this ginormous, super influential series. I think a lot of people kind of picked up on that and were like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Now there's still this some dude, people who who don't prefer that or, or argue against it. Erdrick but, is Erdrick yeah. is like the closest thing that RPGs have to a Mario. So the only the only characters that Brave refers to in any special way, I think, are Erdrick, and then somebody from Bravely Default. But I don't understand why we would get a Bravely Default character. That see, that's the thing is that the other closest correlations don't make as much sense to me. Um, Bravely Default isn't that big of a deal. No. Not, not at least, like, not compared, not compared to Dragon Quest by far, and I would say even not compared to Kingdom Hearts. So, yeah, it's just, it's not, it, it just, it wasn't that big. It wasn't that big, and it's not new anymore. Like, it's kind of yeah. had its time. So it's like. Now that's it. I, I like Bravely Default. I hope they continue it. It's yeah. got a great soundtrack. But there's nothing, there's still, nothing wrong with Bravely you're Default. You're trying, you're trying to compare. You're trying to compare. Bravely default to Dragon Quest. <laughs> it'd be like, like if they oh, it'd be man. like if they put in Klonoa over Pac-Man. Right, exactly, exactly. Which I mean, like it's, some it's people like, advocated for, but <laughs> sure, and it, and it's and it is still a great game. It's a great character, but Pac-Man is Pac-Man, dude. <laughs> exactly, Pac-Man's Pac-Man. It's like, ee. so I don't know. So that's enough about that. I think that's. Enough about that. Another thing people are... Uh, the the other big one people are thinking might happen at E3 is a Microsoft character. Yes. And, and that can I go think, a couple well, different ways. A lot ways. of people are kind of on board with that idea. Okay, they, they just drop Airdrick and then they announce a character and that character is a Microsoft character. They just come out and they're like, look, you already know that we don't actually have any games. We're going to talk about <laughs> Smash. And so the, the two that get the most buzz right now are Steve from Minecraft, which I yes. think is really just because of the rumors and leaks from earlier on. Um, and then Banjo Kazooie. definitely a part of it. And then Banjo Kazooie because of polls, mostly. Yes. Popularity polls. That's, and then Mas that's, yeah. And then Master Chief really only gets said because he really is like the closest thing that Microsoft has to like a gaming mascot. The def uh, because, I definitely, I think that's because Banjo Kazooie, that's, because Banjo Kazooie and Minecraft are both not really looked at as Microsoft things. Even though Microsoft owns them now, they Microsoft weren't really owns them now. But I mean, they, yeah, they that's really, not what they're remembered for. Minecraft's yeah. remembered for you know the indie title. It's like it it's like it's like Bayonetta is not really a Sega thing. Exactly. Yeah. It's and, a it's and, a it's and, a platinum game thing. Banjo Kazooie is still remembered as a Nintendo character. That's why people want him in Smash Brothers in the first place. Is you know not because oh he's this icon of Microsoft or he's this icon of Rareware. You know they see it's like no it, Banjo Kazooie is this big deal on Nintendo back in the day, and that, that's the reason I want him too. <laughs> yeah, Master Chief is the one that actually is like this is Microsoft. Yes. Um, but. There haven't been any rumors pointing towards him, and I think one of the guys from the company like straight up said that he wasn't in or something. Right. Um, and yeah, I think it'd be weird to put him in. So I, I, I don't think it's terribly likely. I don't think it's likely at all. I think it'd be awesome. Um, just as someone who grew up with Halo, but yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of feel the same way. I have. I feel like when it comes to like characters, Banjo Kazooie makes a lot more sense as like a character because I feel like Minecraft is better represented by things that aren't. A playable character I, the, the, the way that monster hunter was i understand why people believe or even desire steve as a playable character in smash brothers i just don't agree when you talk about minecraft minecraft is like a self-insert experience and 
it's not really about characters. I feel like it is one of those things that is best represented by having a stage that is Minecraft. And I don't know what you would do with it exactly, but there's a lot you probably could do. Um, having creepers, having stuff like that. Randomly like, generated terrain would be pretty cool. Randomly generated terrain and then you have skeletons and creepers coming out and stuff. Like, that is that is what represents, like, the Minecraft experience. In the way that, like, having to fight a Rathalos um, represents the Monster Hunter experience. More than playing as, like, a hunter. And I think that's just generally how I feel about Steve. It's not that he couldn't work. You can absolutely make a moveset for him. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely not that he couldn't work. But I don't... I don't think... When people think about Minecraft, they're not like, oh, fuck yeah, Steve. You know? I think, think most about... people, uh, I think most people change their skin to whatever they want. Yeah. Like, so I guess that's the thing is I, I just, I don't think Steve really has a lot of pull as a character. Minecraft itself is absolutely gigantic. It's a huge thing. But I think it's one of those things where people would get more excited over some of the enemies being in or having a stage that is Minecraft and that incorporates minecraft style survival elements i think that kind of stuff would get people more excited than just playing as steve i don't fully agree i think there is you know i think there definitely is some worth to having self-insert characters for certain purposes you know my feelings on steve himself being playable would be no different than like having villager from animal crossing or a pokemon trainer um because I think what you do there is that you implement, you know, what the elements of that game are into the character. And it kind of goes around a moveset, which, which we talked about. But I, I do think that there is worth in that. That, okay, you're going to have Steve playable. You're going to have a character who's focused on, you know, representing weapons of Minecraft, re representing elements like building blocks and, um, you know, building terrain elements as part of your moveset. Uh, you know, you have fun with some of the tools in that game, like throwing ender pearls, maybe hang glider, you know, uh, riding on pigs, stuff like that. And I think that there is worth in that, that I think, I think a lot of people would still believe that the most fun way to represent or to use Minecraft in Smash Brothers would be as a playable character and, and you getting to do those things that you do in Minecraft in the form of a playable character. Um... My my entire my entire thing is that I'm just not a Minecraft fan. <laughs> so the reason why I think Villager for Animal Crossing works in a way that Steve doesn't is first off that Animal Crossing is a Nintendo thing, and um, I think that's definitely they, an advantage. I think that is definitely they, an advantage. And we had dozens of other Nintendo characters first. And yes, pretty much all true. the other franchises were represented. And so when you are the company that the game is about, you get to have like the more obscure stuff. Like we weren't getting Villager instead of Mario or instead of Link. We were getting Villager in addition to all this other stuff. Same thing with like Wii Fit Trainer. We were getting that more obscure weird stuff because we already had the big stuff. Right, um, like let's say let's say instead of like Sonic the Hedgehog or Mega Man, we got Harvest Moon Farmer. Yeah, and then I also think that uh, I also think that Villager works in a way that Steve doesn't quite, because yeah, you're doing like the, uh, you know, you're representing like the stuff that you do in the game, but like the stuff in the game is like all stuff that you're like doing it's not really stuff that happens to you so you're sw so you're swinging the bug net and you're uh in your in your i guess you don't ride on gyroids in the game but like you're messing, <laughs> yeah. you're messing around with gyroids <laughs> like it is about like that um it is that sort of thing but like steven minecraft like I, I i guess he could like send out creepers after people but like creepers aren't a tool that he uses Minecraft is a game about things happening to you. Like, it's, it's a survival well, game. As far as the gameplay goes, yeah. If you're actually sure. playing the game and not it's just about, building shit. It's true. That, like, there is creative mode, so that you could... The creative mode aspects is the stuff that you would do with, I Steve, so. as a play, with Steve as a playable character. You'd Throwing be, you'd buckets be, of lava and yeah, stuff you'd be like doing that. Yeah, you'd be doing the creative mode stuff. 
But like, a big part of Minecraft is the survival elements, and it's the monsters coming at you, and it's the it's the changing terrain, and it's it's all that stuff. And I think that that's stuff that you can't really show in uh, in a character that well. But it's stuff that you could show through a stage. It's stuff that you could show through an assist trophy. Um, stuff like that. Uh, it's it's hard for me... Like I said, I, I keep bouncing back to this. It's hard for me to talk on this topic because my problem is that I'm such a huge Banjo-Kazooie and Smash person, and I'm just not a Minecraft person. So like, I'm always going to wind up going back to that. <laughs> it's not that Steve has no value. Like There definitely is value in it. Right, because well, the I, other I thing think... I want to bring up, just to be fair, the other thing I want to bring up, which is absolutely true, is that Minecraft is like the second best-selling video game of all time behind Tetris. That yes. is an impressive feat, and yes. undeniably, it's gonna it would drive in a, a crowd seeing Minecraft content in Smash because that is a big audience that Minecraft has. And I think that Banjo Kazooie would also drive a lot of sales. And Banjo Kazooie is about Banjo and Kazooie, <laughs> right? And like, uh, <laughs> and like, and like, you are, you are, you are getting the spirit of the game from these characters. Like, these characters are the focal point, and it's yeah. what, ex and, and and they are what excites people about like the franchise. Right. It, it, I there there just it, oh, there does seem to be kind of a natural disadvantage when you have a game that's not character driven versus one that is when you're talking about a game that's about character mascots fighting each other it's it's fire emblem versus advance wars like people are like why don't we have an advance wars mascot it's like because advance wars the soldiers are just soldiers they're just nameless things but fire emblem builds characters yeah like that, that, that that's the big difference between fire emblem and advance wars and i think that's why what you fire have emblem... in advance i mean you have the co's in advance wars but then you kind of determine okay well how do they yeah, and work the CO's, as playable characters and the co's them... Do you and make the them CEOs, use the soldier abilities? Do you make them just summon soldiers? You and the know? COs still really aren't that developed as characters compared they're to not, Fire Emblem characters. They're kind of, they're kind of, not totally, but they're kind of just one note. It's kind of that, yeah, it's kind of that <laughs> thing where they just, they, they pick a personality for them, and they have that, and they say like a line or two every yeah. fight, and that's basically it. Like, they're just, they're not developed characters, which is why the, the assist trophy represents the game fine you get you get what the game is about from that assist trophy yeah it's it's it is very hard to compare steve to banjo and kazooie because it, that is something that is so character driven you are following the adventures of banjo and kazooie this is them these are their powers um and that's and they, what the game is about yeah they are they are they are beloved characters and like the game is not bigger than they are like they now, are the game now the other thing that is fair to totally fair to bring up too is that it doesn't have to be a competition. Um, there are still four slider fighter slots. It's very possible we get both Steve and Banjo down the line. All four, all four are just Microsoft characters. Yeah, that's right. We're all the four that we're going to talk about. And then, I don't know. Master Chief is Master Chief. <laughs> he he just literally has no tie to Nintendo, so I just don't. Yeah, the, well, the only thing right now is that there's a Master Chief skin in Minecraft, which is still pre present in the Nintendo version. That's that's all. Eh. <laughs> you also <laughs> just don't see people asking for Master Chief the way that they ask for Banjo Kazooie, or even if, for you know, Steve. If if a Halo game came to Nintendo Switch, they might start doing that. I still just as, I don't as, know as, when, as I, a when I look at Smash icon, as a character icon, Master Chief might, is probably bigger than Steve and Banjo Kazooie. I don't know. Halo is such a big thing. I don't know. I feel like Banjo Kazooie stands out more. I don't disagree. Like like Master Chief is pretty interchangeable with a lot of other characters. He he is. Um He's, not he's really kind a of he's kind of, you know, he's definitely a character that's more attached once again, you know, more, more attached to the franchise than he than he is as an individual character, but he's not absent as an individual character you know what i mean because of those tie-ins he is remembered well i also just don't like 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 joker joining smash it was like this like it felt like this cool thing and like oh they're doing all this cool stuff i i feel like i get 
that more from Banjo Kazooie than I do from Master Chief. Uh, same here. I do think there's a lot of fun stuff you could do with Chief, like moveset wise, with like plasma weapons and plasma grenades. And you can make a good vehicles, moveset for anybody. But... Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, especially me. <laughs> yeah, you would be a great character. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's 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 what I meant. Of course. D Chris, I just like Banjo and Kazooie so much. <laughs> I know. And here's the thing. I don't even really like them that much. I, I know you I, don't, I, I, but you I still know. you're still on this. So. I tried playing the games and I just never really got into them. But when like I but when I look at it, it's just like like these are characters that are super iconic and super unique, and can like only they can do the things that they do. Um, they have uh, the kind of attitude and aesthetic that seems to fit into Smash perfectly. There's a lot of cute little referential things you can do when it comes to uh, stages and doing extra little things, like maybe having like special uh, victory screens for them as well, or you know, th there's a lot of music you could use for it. There's so many things you could do with Banjo Kazooie, and it just seems like you could really add a lot to Smash with it in a way that I just don't know. I feel like with Minecraft you could. Uh, absolutely add like a lot of things but I think that Steve himself isn't really one of those things that seems like the great addition and then with Master Chief I just don't feel it man <laughs> yeah I don't this I don't think what, it's I likely what it at comes all down to. that's the thing I don't think it's 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 likely at all yeah um, who, was the, who was the fourth? I'm genuinely curious. Okay, Fusion, wait, wait. Before, before that, before that, before that, with Banjo Kazooie, I don't think there's anything I could say that like about Banjo Kazooie that like hundreds of other online people have done. I I have been holding off on doing any kind of Banjo Kazooie move set because like I don't think I have anything to contribute that people haven't already done. But like, oh man. Banjo Kazooie are just to me. Those are characters that just should have already been in Smash Brothers in the first place. Like I was shocked as a kid that they weren't already in Super Smash Brothers Melee because they were such a thing for the N64. Like man, this should have been a no-brainer character addition. And they people are still st people are still stuck on that. You know, it's a real you know testimony to their legacy. People are still he is still one of the top most wanted characters left. For Smash Brothers now, because they just left that such big of an impact. And just like you are saying, man, so much of their abilities and the style of their game fits Smash Brothers so well on top of everything else I just said. Like, man, it just really feels like it should be there. It feels like it should have been there all along. Speaking of which, if they add Geno at E3... <laughs> yeah? I will upload a video of myself weeping and eating Pringles. I mean, I did something similar. I, I wasn't weeping. I For freaked out. Kid. I freaked out when when they find, when they showed off Little Mac, because that yeah. was that was like my childhood. My favorite thing. My favorite that was thing my is childhood when, character desire. When Little Mac got revealed, my favorite thing was everybody like just going to like send messages to you, like, "Hey, did you see this?" Yeah, yeah. And when there were a lot of people I noticed on like other videos that were like, "Oh, Pizza Dude Man's gonna be so happy about this," and th that made me happy that people realized I wanted if, this so badly. If so that Gino, was, that was a really nice feeling. If Gino or Tingle or Ray from Custom Robo or Isaac from Golden Sun ever happen, it's gonna I'm be gonna, you. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna break down so hard. Yeah, that'd be cool. Those are all be cool choices. It'd be such, so, so many cool things. I feel like, I feel like Gino and Tingle are the only ones that even have a chance anymore at this point. Um, because they let Custom Robo expire. And, uh, I mean, Isaac is an assist trophy. <laughs> yeah. So, so here we are. I never get what I want. And yet I still don't complain about Smash because I'm a good consumer. <laughs> right. All right, who's yeah. his fourth character? Uh, oh, I, I think it, it, it's definitely simmered down because people are like, okay, come on now. But, like, man, once they announced it for Switch, so many people were like, oh, we can have Cuphead now! Oh, my God. Yeah, that's which, not Which, once again, right, Cuphead's not really owned by Microsoft. That was just more of a, as far as I understand, just an exclusive, uh, exclusivity deal for a while. Yeah, it was that, an exclusive publisher That Microsoft was just thing. like, hey, Studio they, VR, we'll, we'll pay you this, and you only release Cuphead on, on Xbox for now. Yeah, like, they okay. helped. They helped. Uh, they helped fund like the like a like a bigger version of the game in exchange for having it be exclusive. 
uh, for a while. For a while. So, uh, <laughs> so once again, I don't really, like, you know, what, what can you say about Cuphead that you can't say about, you know, dozens of other third-party characters? Yes, this would be um, really cool. They is, are, is it, they are, they are, they are, likely? they are, Maybe they are, not, but they're cool. They are animated cups who shoot bullets from their fingers. That's right. That is, that is I, I'm, I think I think that's what you can say about Cuphead that you can't say about dozens of other characters. I mean, I'm getting Cuphead, tired. Cuphead would be cool. Dante would be cool. Phoenix Wright would be cool. Resident Evil characters would be cool. A fair, a fair cool. amount of people, uh, when Devil May Cry got announced to be coming to Switch, <laughs> that is the like, cup. It's the Cuphead effect. Oh my God! This means Dante's coming. It's like no, 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 I don't think it does. Calm down. You're okay. <laughs> Everything will be fine. Uh, there have been uh, legitimately a lot more people on the Resident Evil character train recently. I think if you're going Capcom, that's one of the biggest things they have left. Is Resident Evil? It is. Evil. What people have been pointing out, it is the biggest, um, I believe, video game related media franchise that's not in Super Smash Brothers now. It's a massively influential and long-running series. It's had games on Nintendo. Um, Capcom themselves have pretty good relationships with Nintendo. I couldn't tell by the three Capcom characters that are already in Smash Brothers. Which is one of the reasons why I think it probably won't be happening. Yeah, we'll um, see. It's because there is a fair amount of Capcom characters. But I also don't know if Sakurai particularly cares about that in comparison to just... Uh, having characters people like you know so it's very possible that we get like two capcom characters this past and everybody's like why do we have so many capcom characters and he's like because he likes those characters and it doesn't really matter who owns them you know we draw a lot of arbitrary lines in the speculation community because we want to be the right ones and all that so we try to come up with these rules but like none, none of these things are really set it's very possible we get another capcom character and we don't get any new square enix characters who knows yeah maybe maybe the rest is just all capcom characters I have been trying to figure out if I still feel like all of the characters are going to be third party. I think it's I, a possibility. I don't think it's a definite ability, but I do I think, think it's a possibility. I, I think I still feel like it's likely. With the extent that they went with Joker, I feel like they're wanting to go outside of Nintendo to bring in as many like outside influences as possible to make like really interesting and big updates around every character. Um... It's just the vibe that I'm getting. I would not be upset if there are some first-party characters. There's a couple I would really like to see. Um, maybe Gino is brave. Yeah, who's maybe. To, who's to say? A lot of people are um, brave. Maybe Tingle is brave. You'd have to be to go outside dressed like that. I'm just excited to see what they do because they really hit it out of the park with Joker, and I don't really care who's coming next, man. Oh, it's all going to be great. That's all I yeah. know. <laughs> yeah but is there anything else we got to talk about i'm trying to remember i have uh so we talked about e3 briefly we talked about uh the way dlc's been getting revealed we talked about joker i guess we talked about rumors that yeah, Fleetwood mac album no, there haven't been very many rumors so we talked about the one there is i have this i have this possible i have this possible uh leak for the roster oh yeah yeah, uh, I I was I was at the grocery store and I heard these uh, kids talking yeah. about video games, uh -huh. and they were they 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 talked a lot mm -hmm. about uh, Cuphead, <gasps> and they were talking a lot about Alien Isolation, mm -hmm. and they were they they talked for a little bit about uh, about Fortnite, yeah, and then they talked about Undertale. Wait a and minute, and that was. And that was all kids, that they talked kids about. Kids don't talk about Fortnite anymore. These kids were these these kids are old <laughs> souls. You know these That's these right. kids these kids are born in the wrong generation. These kids these kids belong more with the adults than with the kids. You know what I'm talking about. So so I think I'm pretty sure that means that we're gonna get Fortnite guy, Undertale man. Do you, uh, do you, do you think we're gonna get Undertale and Smash? I think we're gonna get Undertale. I think we're gonna get Undertale and Smash. This took this completely anecdotal thing that happened to me. I'm pretty sure that's I'm pretty sure that's what's gonna happen. There we go, guys. You heard it here first. There we go. You heard the leak. Remember to subscribe as I upload daily Smash videos with the no, the next no four, editing. The next four DLC characters are Steve, the Fortnite, Undertale, <laughs> um, 
Fortnite Undertale, my favorite character. Uh, Freddy Fazbear. And then they're actually going to cut Joker out and then replace him with Bendy. Who's Bendy? <laughs> ben a Diesel? Lot, lot, of, lot, of kid, lot of my kids talk about Bendy still. Bendy and the Ink Machine. Hey, Isaac. Yeah. Bendy's nuts. Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, it's one in the morning. It's only ten for me. Oh, rub it in. It's been a very long night for me. It's very, been a very long week for me. Um, yeah. I don't know. It is, it is fascinating. We've had a particularly dry... Uh, it's been really dry in terms of rumors and leaks, which I'm honestly fine with. It's I enjoy fine. the speculation a lot more. We had, we had so more. many during Smash Ultimate that this is fine. <laughs> yeah. I, I personally... Yeah. I always prefer it to not get leaked. Just because I find the speculation more fun, and when it's the thing where it's like, oh well, yeah, I guess this is it. It's just not that's that, that's not fun. Uh, I guess we should probably wrap this up. Is there anything else you can think of that we should be talking about? No, I have this bowl of cobbler next to me that my wife gave me though, so I kind of want to eat it. It's me, the cobbler. <laughs> I put together my plans from scratch. <laughs> I will give you All a delicious dessert and fix your shoes. In fact, the delicious dessert is your new shoe. <laughs> your shoe is a pie! Your sh <laughs> <That's it. laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> are, we, are we tired enough, Chris? <laughs> I don't think you understand, man. I I was working on this production of Spring Awakening for the last week. Uh-huh. And I was at, like, the theater for, like, 14 hours a day for, like, days in a row. I and then I was And then I was still working my, like, shifts over the weekend and then going to the theater afterwards. And I also had, like, three auditions that week. I, got, I didn't get auditions for a really long time. I was just running all over the place. It was an exhausting week. And then... And then, like an idiot, I picked up some extra shifts because I was like, ah, oh, people are going out of town and they need help getting some stuff covered. So I covered that stuff like an idiot on the days where I was supposed to be resting. And I just, I've, I don't know, I've lost touch with my body <laughs> at this point. I, I feel, I've been in like that perpetual state of like feeling like you're watching yourself from like the third person. Like you're not actually in your body, you know? Or you feel like just an observer in your own life. That's been me, like, for the last, like, four days. Ugh. I know what you mean. Just four like, days in a row, just like... Four days in a row, yeah, you just get up in the morning, it's like... And I feel like the I feel like the narrator in Stanley Parable. Yeah. I've, I've, I've felt like, like that. Like, I don't know if I've, I've felt like that in that many days in a row, I'm not sure. It's like, well, Chris is going to get up now, and... Wait, wait a second. Maybe he should shower. Oh, it's been three days. He hasn't even thought about it. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. It's it's been it's been it's been one of those days. Cause then on top of that, I also didn't have a debit card for the first week of this month because uh, mine expired, and the replacement didn't get here. I'm uh, so worried because mine's expiring next month, and I haven't heard anything yet. Uh, so, the month that is written on your card. Your card is good until the end of that month. Okay, cool. Yeah, you should be getting a replacement. If you don't have your replacement card, um, like, I'd say halfway through the month, then I would call them. Because I waited till the end of the month to call them. And they were like, oh, oh yeah, you should have gotten that a couple weeks ago. And I was like, well, I didn't. <laughs> All right, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, so I would, I would check that. That's just... That's just some financial advice for all the kids out there uh, watching the Smash Talk episode. <laughs> That's right. I've, I've genuinely been thinking about doing a series of videos. Um, just going over, like... Adult stuff? Information that you need to have, like, basically by the time you're 18, when you're at, like, supporting yourself, that just doesn't get taught in schools, and a lot of parents don't realize they need to teach their kids. Yeah, just super it, practical stuff. Because there are so many things. Like, I, sh I should have been told before I came out to New York City on my own. <laughs> and I had, to, I, had to, I had to figure out how taxes worked. I had to figure out... I had to figure out what credit is. Like... How come none of this stuff was taught? I, I took know. eight... 
I took AP Calculus. It hasn't done shit for me. I don't. I don't really understand credit. I just like pay the money I'm supposed to owe people, and apparently my credit score is good because I do that. Yeah, basically. Um, but like, it's it's a, it's a bit more complicated than that. But like, like yeah, we went and got a new car, and they had to check my credit score. And the owner was like, yeah, your credit score is so good, you could buy any car on the lot if you wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Like, it's, it's, it's amazing because, like, our credit system, like, incentivizes you going in debt. It's, it's fast. It's, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so I, I thought about doing videos just about that, just because it's just, like, the fact that, the fact that you didn't know how debit cards work. I didn't know that. Until, well, like, it, why until it just happened to me. It didn't <laughs> right? happen. I, I didn't know until it just know. happened to me. You're not going to know. That's something I always, I always, you know, like, when someone's like, what, you didn't know that? Or, like, you know, says that to someone else, how did you not know about that? It's like, look, you're not going to know about things unless, A, you experienced it, or, B, someone told you. If you happened to not meet one of those two conditions, why would you know about it? That's it, man. And, like, that stuff's not being taught in our schools. So I'll do it. <laughs> That's right. Just watch. I'll be the I'll be the hero this country needs. I almost used your old username right there. <laughs> you almost called me Lord Jackal. <laughs> Lord Jackal, financial advisor. Don't ever get credit cards. Just starve. Just starve. Just 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 don't pay rent. I've I've never had a credit card. Anyway, so I guess that so I guess that wraps it up for this uh this this level of uh this level god this episode i'm so gone dude so that wraps it up for this episode of uh investment talk with uh jackal and pizza thank you for watching thank you for listening if you weren't watching i don't i wouldn't blame you i try to edit these to be somewhat watchable but like i gotta be real i kind of expect people to just listen to this as a podcast while they do other things Makes i don't sense. know i mean i don't even show my face so i mean like you don't show your face and then mine isn't doing anything interesting the whole time I guess the coolest thing about this is that you can see my cat sleeping in the corner of the screen right here. Outside of that, there's, there's not a whole lot going on here to watch, so I wouldn't be surprised if you guys just listened. Um, makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. Uh, and if you want to listen to the old episodes, I, I unlist them when they become outdated. So, like, when the game came out, I unlisted all of them just because they take up a lot of space. And, like, when they're not relevant anymore, uh, I don't want that to be what people see is like yeah, you get the, the thing you get my the comments is. that are like uh this already happened god Basically. i got a i got a comment recently um uh, on my sans move set video but someone's like so and so already did a move set for sans i check their video it came out a week ago mine came out 5 months ago has it already been 5 months Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like, it's like, um, so it's already did one. I, I commented back. I'm like, I did mine first. <laughs> the point is, if you want to listen to more of these, uh, there is a playlist on my channel of the, of these podcast style smash talks with Isaac that we've done for, uh, for smash ultimate. And then I also have a playlist of like the old smash talks I did for smash four a long time ago. They're awful. Um, <laughs> I, they, I, they blow my mind. Like, how cringy they are. I can't believe it. Uh, and as always, you can check below for the Discord if you want to hang out there, if you want to yell at me, if you want to disagree with me, if you want to donate to my Patreon. I would love to be able to eat. And um, that's the way the news goes, I suppose. That's Don't forget to check uh -huh, out... Uh -huh, I like it. That's the uh -huh, way... Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, I like it. Uh, and also, you go over to Pizza Dude Man Guy's channel. Uh, he does uh, a lot of Smash moveset stuff over there. He goes, like, really in-depth into, like, how could this character work? And it's not really a thing of, like, this is who I think is going to be in. It's more just, this would be a fun idea for a character. And let's see how that would work. And, uh, yeah, those videos are doing pretty well. They're pretty well made. People are liking it. Kids are happy. Nobody's fighting. The and world let's is have, at peace. And let's have a big congratulations for Adustus at the time of this recording recently reaching 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yay! I, I did it. I did it while doing nothing. I did it while doing nothing. I uploaded I uploaded that Who's On Is It Anyway video over a month and a half ago. And then like after like two weeks, it started blowing up a little bit. It's like, all right. And then it just kept going. 
Now I got like this whole audience of like 800 people that subscribed after that Who's Line video. And I don't know how to, I don't know how to follow that up. I don't know how to please them, man. So now I'm doing a Smash Talk. <laughs> That's right. Complete, completely different kind of content. Probably not going to be what they're here for. That's right. But it's okay. Oh, I don't no. make, I, it's okay. This isn't a job for me. <laughs> so it's, it's okay if everybody hates it. What's the worst that can happen? Thanks for watching, everybody. You Thank have you so yourselves. Much. Thank you so much. And we'll see you guys probably around E3, so probably about a month from now. Oh, yeah. A little early. Probably around a month from now, around E3. We'll probably... Probably what we're going to do is we'll probably watch the Nintendo Direct live. And if Smash content happens, which I can't imagine there won't be any... Yeah, we'll when, a, when Smash content happens. When Smash content happens, then, like, after that presentation, I guess we'll be doing a bit of a Smash Talk live, and that'll probably be the next Smash Talk. Yeah, you should just is, watch uh, that instead of the uh, treehouse that they'll probably have. Yeah, fuck the, <laughs> fuck the treehouse. What, is it just gameplay? Who needs gameplay? <laughs> Real talk, though, I'll probably be playing the treehouse while we, uh... <laughs> while, while we talk, talk. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll probably be the next Smash Talk. I don't Sounds know. good to me. Sounds good to me. I'll try to actually upload some other videos before then. I have a lot I want to make. I've just been so busy lately. And I have crippling imposter syndrome. <laughs>